So quick video here, how to ward off judgment and criticism requests. Someone asked me to comment to Dan, the man. Someone I rate, but Dan's really got to man up. He's really got to carb up. Because all this fasting and calorie restriction and all this spiritual woo-woo nonsense is, is turning into a bit of a fragile person. Which anyone is when you starve that much and try and seek enlightenment through starvation it never works all that happens is you go a bit you know nuts anyone does anyone does doesn't matter how strong you are mentally or whatever like if you took away my carbohydrate intake or load it down a place with pineapple oil i'd be i'd be someone i wouldn't want to be proud of uh emotionally so how to ward off judgment and criticism just scan through this email here blah, 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 blah. some people blame their family their mother um didn't have a uh, loving upbringing, blah, blah, blah. You know what? I've seen too many examples of people succeeding in the warding off judgment criticism to really pinpoint on an upbringing. It, it, you know, it, <laughs> what can I say? Look, here's an example. Look at this haircut here. Freely's, I said, Freely, can you like shave here? She said, yeah, I can do that. Look at that. It's fucked up. But it doesn't matter because I don't really care. But I know, you know, a few years ago, maybe before I was vegan, if I was in the cycling, I, would, I wouldn't have left the house like that. I'd like, I can't go out. Like, people will, like, will, will judge me and criticize me. And like, I can't handle that. <laughs> I was undercard, man. I didn't understand about how it all works. Now I know. Do I ever get undercard? Yeah, I might go out for a long ride and be unorganized, whatever. Don't eat enough. So I might feel you know, negative emotions and find it difficult to ward off criticism and judgment. But I understand, okay, I'll be getting some carbs in soon, some sleep water. I'll be alright tomorrow in a few hours. I'm not going to take this personally. Move on. Does that make sense? It's just like, if you get a flat tire on your bike, you don't go, oh my god, I'm fucked. You go, okay, I'm, next 10 minutes I'm going to have to fix the flat tire and then we'll get going. So you don't panic, you understand what's happening. My t-shirt, you know, I never used to wear stuff like this. But I don't care as much anymore about the judgement and criticism. Why? Because I'm confident within myself, but priority, uh, priority, uh, primarily, I'm getting enough carbohydrates, I'm getting enough sleep, I'm getting enough water. So I understand now what's going on. So I straight away have like a a, a, a judgment, criticism radar on me that I know if anything's coming through and really offending me that I'm just not getting enough sleep, water, sugar. Straight up. <laughs> straight up. I remember my bike got stolen in a 2009 Malaysia, $10,000 worth uninsured, no insurance, got stolen. I thought someone did a prank on me. And when I realized it wasn't a prank, I was outraged. I was like, how can someone steal my bike? Like, I would never steal someone's bike. I'm like, you know, I don't ever have drivers. I was like, ride a bike, some more eco and all that stuff. And you know, I'm doing right, I'm such a nice guy. And I'd never steal anyone's bike. How could someone steal my bike? I'm so offended. But I'm like, well, being offended is not gonna change anything. So what I did is I honestly got a bottle of water, one and a half liters, sculled that, Got some watermelon, got some bananas, ate that. And all of a sudden I started to feel better. I'm like, well, what's positive about this is this bike's been stolen in Malaysia and someone's going to use it. They didn't steal it for greed. They stole it because they needed it. They needed a bike and they probably thought some, you know, dumb guy left his bike there unlocked and we'll take that. So quickly change the perception. And that's what you've got to do, how to ward off criticism and judgment is you've got to look after your basic human physiological needs priority. How would you make Duran Rider crack? Get me to do a 24 hour mountain bike race, so you got no sleep. You're always balancing the water and sugar in that one, because that is a fucking hard event. And maybe in the last few hours, take away my water and sugar and say, you have to ride, or we're gonna throw stones at you. So I'm riding around the track and dodging the stones, but eventually I'm gonna crack emotionally, because my water and sugar and sleep is just gonna, it's, it doesn't matter how full on you are, if you deprive yourself of enough sleep, water, sugar, single ones or a combination of, you will crack. You will not be able to ward off comments and criticisms and judgment, etc. Everyone, here's the thing though, you gotta understand, everybody judges, everybody criticizes, everybody has an opinion. And then there's two types of people in the world. There's those who say, yeah, I do. And there's those who pretend they don't. I don't judge you, Duran Rod, but you're a fucking asshole. I don't criticize you, Duran, but your haircut really sucks. I don't criticize you, Duran, no judgment, but you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> so. I don't take it personally because I do the same shit. I criticize and judge. I'm a critical thinker and I encourage other people to do it. Sure, I'd like people to be more like um, objective and instead of just saying you're a fucking idiot. 
have a realistic debate. Things like that. But I don't take it personally, man, because I give it. I give it and I can take it. How can you be an educator if you can't handle criticism and judgment? You're like insane. How can you be a cyclist if you can't fix a flat tire? You're insane. You're gonna have a team car follow you to the shops? Rest of your life? It's, in, it's insane. <laughs> I remember when I moved out of home age 17, my main priority was like, how am I gonna clean my Nike shoes? I don't know how to, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> learn skills, carb the fuck up, hydrate, get early nights, end the orthorexia, end the starvation. I see it a lot in the raw food, health food community. People, they go so full on into like, I gotta purify and I gotta, that's detoxify and regenerate and all that. And that's great, but people do it in such extremes that it becomes a negative thing on their life because they're starving. They're not getting the sleep. So they're, they're not getting enough carbohydrates because they're trying to be too pure. And then they're up late at night just on Facebook going, what, what does that mean? What, 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 what did you say that? It just going to make you crazy, man. going to make you crazy. So fasting and all this stuff, I don't recommend. I do recommend going out into nature, having enough water, having enough sugar, having enough sleep, you know. But when you deprive yourself, when you stress yourself that much by not eating and drinking and, and not sleeping enough, you're gonna be a fucking nut job, man. I've literally seen stable people being deprived of sleep, water, sugar, and or, and literally end up in mental clinics, locked down, full of antipsychotic drugs. Okay, so it doesn't matter how hardcore you are, eventually everyone has a breaking point, everyone has a threshold point, myself included. So if you wanna ward off judgment, criticism, you have to take care of your sleep water sugar. And then on top of that, have a mentality, I don't take things personally. And get people to test you. Your universe is gonna test you. God, Allah, whoever you believe in, is gonna test you when you say, I don't take things personally. Like right now, I just got an email, someone said, Harley, there's some uh, some uh, documents for you to pick up, there's some lawyer stuff. And I'm like, ah, guess who's suing me now? <laughs> have a guess, post your comments down below. So I'm like, cool. But when I first got sued, I was like, oh my God. Like I was just like full adrenaline. I'm like, oh my God. Now, honestly, 1000%, I get those emails. I'm like, awesome. How can I have fun with this? So what I'm gonna do, this is a tip I got from my mate, is that uh, I will write back, I'll get the email address. I said, oh, actually, I, I lost the documents. Can you please send them all the way back out to Australia? And so, I wait a few more weeks and I said, oh, actually, I've moved address. Can you send them here? And I'll just keep doing that and try and rack up as many thousands of dollars of lawyer fees for whoever's trying to sue me now and have fun with it. Life can either be fun and magic or it can be dull and tragic. It's just the choice in the moment. It's just the choice in the moment. So that's all I can say, man, is just carb up, man. Get this sleep early nights. Otherwise, you're going to be neurotic, hard to handle, unenjoyable, desperate. People are always like treading on eggshells around you, or treading on what's a better term? They're treading on peaches around you because they're like, oh, it's about, about to fly off the handle. What else can I say about this one? Does it make sense? Can you relate to what I'm saying? Those who eat the least will freak out the most. In the health food community, those that eat the least carbs will freak out the most. In the cycling community, those that eat the least will freak out the most. There's plenty of team managers out there who go, that cyclist is really good, but they're fucking a nutcase because they starve themselves to be lean. And they can ride pretty good, but we don't want that person on our team because they're gonna be so like, freaking out all the time, it's not gonna be good for team dynamics. So nah, we'll get the we'll get the rider who's a little bit fatter, might doesn't ride as good, but pretty good, but they've got a good team dynamic. We'll get them in and then we maybe we'll change their diet within the team. So those who eat the least will freak out the most. And if you eat the least carbohydrates in your life, you will freak out the most. I'm eating the most carbohydrates I've ever consumed in my life. And I'm definitely the most thick skinned I've ever been honestly judging by my haircut and clothing and some of the YouTube videos I'm about to put up in public some of this stuff's gonna be outrageous but uh <laughs> and no not on, not on drugs so there you go bottom line man is you gotta look after your basic human physiological needs 100% and then by measuring your sleep measuring carb intake okay sleep go to bed at 8 o'clock a few nights uh, a few 
go to bed at eight o'clock every night for a couple of months and see what happens to you. All right? Doesn't matter if you can't sleep, go to bed, lights off, put a mask on your face, chill out. Eight o'clock. You can listen to some audiobooks, whatever, just chill. Eight o'clock, turn everything off, maybe except for your positive stuff on your iPod, and done. Water. Drink enough water, wake up, have a quart of water every single morning. Maybe before, after your sport, whatever, or with your sport, bring it with you, like I do a lot of the time. Have that quart of water. Drink enough water every day so your urine is clear. At night time, you want to pee a quart, at least. A piss in a bottle, piss in a pot like me and Freely do. Tip on the garden in the morning. Rebuild, remineralize the soil. Carbs. 10 grams of carbs minimum per kilo of body weight per day. So for someone like me, 65 kilos roughly, 650 grams, that's about 32 bananas a day. <laughs> or it would be a kilo bag of rice, or a kilo bag of quinoa, or how many pounds of potatoes that would be, I don't know, five pounds of potatoes, something like that, six, seven pounds of potatoes. As much carbs as you want. I prefer fruit, I'll have a backup plan, definitely, because I don't want to be under carb now, I'm doing so much, helping so many people. Back in the day, I'd be like, okay, oh, I can't get my fruit, I can just... I can just retreat to the woods for a while. But now it's like, Harley, we depend on you. Carb the fuck up, please, so you can keep giving. Fruit's the best. Have a backup plan. No doubt about it. 100%. Okay, so that's the big problem people go. It's like, I'm going to get fruit, I'm going to starve. Or I'm going to eat, like, um, cashew butter and avocados to stay raw. But then they just <laughs> fucking get flawed. So carb up, low fat, vegan, 100%. Try and keep it low sodium. Minimum retention there. And do that for a few months and see what happens to your ability to ward off criticism and judgment. How to ward off comments and criticisms. Understand that it's your personal physiology you have to take care of. Understand that you live in a community with other people who judge, critique, and share opinions just as you do. Understand that. Be tolerant. Be giving. Have an attitude of gratitude. And go, wow, that's cool. People share their opinions. Whatever, man. That's good. And use it to build yourself up so you can help other people. I base my success on my ability to help positively influence other people to help themselves build their health and fitness. That's how I base my achievement, my success. Easy. It's never fail. I can never fail. There's always someone to help, help themselves. Even if it's not myself. So there you go. <laughs> Do it. <laughs>